Okay, so now that we've seen some examples of regular expressions, let's give a more formal definition of what a regular expression is. So regular expressions were initially introduced by Stephen Claney, one of the pioneers of computer science in his 1951 paper. And the way that regular expressions are defined for the purposes of CompuE30, and in general, when people think of regular expressions, this is the definition they think of is, suppose we're given some non-empty non -empty alphabet, then we say that a valid regular expression consists of atomic regular expressions, which are joined together with regular expression operators. Okay. So you have these building blocks, these atomic regular expressions, and you can create new valid regular expressions by joining those atomic regular expressions together with, uh, we'll see the plus, the star, and the concat operator. So what are these atomic regular expressions? They're the following. They're the regular expression that looks like the empty set, the regular expression that looks like the empty string, and the regular expression that looks like the symbol A. And these three regular expressions match a certain set of strings. In particular, this regular expression matches with the empty language. This regular expression describes the language containing only the empty string. And this atomic regular expression describes the language only containing A. But what's very important to note is that even though these things look like different mathematical objects, at this point in this definition, they have type regular expression. And that's very important to note because when we create new, uh, more complex valid regular expressions, we're going to start off with these three basic building blocks. And so, of course, to create valid regular expressions, we need to join things that have type regular expression. Okay. okay, so how do we actually join these with regular expression operators? Well, given valid regular expressions R1 and R2, the regular expression operators are the following, and they create new valid regular expressions, R1 plus R2, which again, you can read R1 or R2. And so this regular expression, if it matches a string, so if a string matches this pattern, then that means that either it matches this pattern or it matches this pattern. Then we have the concatenation. So the concatenation is defined as if a string matches all of this pattern, then that means that the string has two parts. The first part matches this pattern and the second part matches this pattern. Then we have the R1 star, so the star operator, but now this is the star operator for regular expressions. And so if a string matches R1 star, then that means that the string W is composed of any number of parts, and each of those parts match the pattern R1. Okay. And then finally, we have this other less informative regular expression operator. This is usually just to disambiguate order precedence. So we can sometimes augment the regular expression R1 with parentheses just to make things super clear, just to make sure that there isn't any ambiguity in the order. And that's also a valid regular expression. But really, this is equivalent to R1. Okay. So for instance, what is an example of a valid and a not valid regular expression? Well, consider the regular expression or consider the following sequence of, let's say, symbols R, where I have A plus B uh, in, in a bracket, dot B dot A plus the empty set star, bracketed. Okay, that reading that doesn't really help you, but in essence, this is a valid regular expression because I have atomic regular expressions, and then these are joined together using regular expression operators. Okay, that was much more helpful than me just reading out this thing, okay? And one comment that someone made during the lecture, which I'd just like to reemphasize, is that to be extremely formal, right, if you're saying something like, I'd like to match the string B, A, A, B, then really what you need to write is B, concat A, concat A, concat B, but this is annoying. 
Um, and we get that BAAB is really um, a set, it's a sequence of atomic regular expressions joined together using the ca concatenation operator for regular expressions. And so typically what we do is we drop these things and we just use this. Okay. And so that's good enough. Okay, good. Um, right. So let me, let me do this before I end the video. So the other thing which I think I already talked about at the beginning or in a previous video is that regular expressions describe regular languages and every regular language can be described by at least one regular expression. And in fact, there's for every, this is an interesting exercise for you to think about, for every regular language, there's actually an infinite number of regular expressions that describe it. And you can sort of construct this, you can prove this very trivially, but uh, I'll, I'll, um, I, I won't give you, I won't give you any, any more hints than that. Um, right, so what was I saying here? Um, yes, so regular expressions describe regular languages. Now, how do we actually determine formally or procedurally the languages described by the regular expression R? You can follow a, you can follow a recursive procedure which exactly maps exactly maps to the definition the recursive definition of regular expressions. So, what does this look like? Well, the first thing we do is we define what languages are described by the atomic regular expressions. Oops, no, 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 that's not a race. By the atomic regular expressions. And this is exact, exactly what I was talking about before. The language described by the regular expression that looks like the empty set is the empty set. The language described by epsilon or the regular expression that looks like the empty string is the language containing the empty string. And then the language described by the regular expression that looks like the symbol A is the language containing the string A, right? Because really this is a string and it's no longer a symbol because, that, because now it's in the language. Okay, so that's how we define the languages described by the atomic regular expressions. Now, how do we define the languages described by these more complex regular expressions, which are join together using the regular expression operators. Well, to do so, what we need to do is we need to map the regular expression operators to language operators. And so to do that, suppose I have R1, R2, which are valid regular expressions. What are the languages denoted by the regular expressions which are joined together using the operators that we just saw? Well, for R1 plus R2, the language described by R1 plus R2 is exactly equal to the language described by R1, union the language described by R2. And so this makes sense. This is exactly how he's talking about patterns or strings matching the pattern R1 plus R2, because if I have some string, which is in here, right, which is in L of R1 plus R2, that means that it's matching this pattern. But then because these two things are equal, that means that W is also in this set, which means that W is either in L of R1, meaning that W matches the pattern of R1, or W is in L of R2, meaning that W matches the pattern of R2. And so that's exactly how we were talking about regular expressions intuitively. Now this has just formalized that by talking about the exact mapping from regular expression operator to language operator. Okay, good, excellent. The next thing is the mapping between the re regular expression concatenation and the language concatenation. So L of R1 to R2 is exactly equal to the language described by R1, concatenated, now this is a language concatenation, the language described by R2. And then finally, the language described by R1 star, that's exactly the language described by R1 whole star, okay? So if I have a string, if I have a string that matches with R1 star, that means that it's in this language, which means that it's also in this language because these things are equal. So that means that W can be broken into several parts by definition of the star operator for languages, where each of these parts are in L of R1, right? And so that's exactly what I was describing R1 star as doing. 
is if a string matches R1 star, then it has multiple parts. Each of those parts match with R1. Okay. And the last thing I'll do before I end the video is I'll quickly talk about the order precedence of regular expressions. This is just to sort of make clear how we can actually um, apply this recursive procedure, which we'll do in the next video. So the order of precedence is that parentheses always have the highest, pre uh, highest precedence, sorry. Then it's the star operator, then it's the concat operator, then it's the plus operator. So what that means, really what I'm saying is that if I have some regular expression that looks like this, a star dot b plus a, then it maps to, if I make it explicit with the parentheses, the pattern a star concatenated with b, or the pattern a, right? And so it does not map to a star concatenated with b or a, okay? So that's what, that's what we're talking about when we're talking about precedence. Okay, I think I'll end the video here, and I'll continue by giving you an example of how we can apply this recursive procedure.